Wednesday, October 11th, 2017, 7.40 p.m., Groton Senior Center. Welcome back, everybody. Will the clerk please take the roll? Representative Adams? Here. Bailey? Here. Baker? Here. Burrell? Here. Bauer? Here. Burgos? Casper? Here. Sini? Here. Dean Shinbrot? Here. Espada? Here. Evans? Here. Frickman? Here. Garcia? Gilly? Hubbard? Here. Kent? Here. Longino? Laughlin? Here. Mar? Marley? Massett? Here. McCabe? Here. McDermott? Here. Merritt? Here. Nault? Here. Nugent? Here. Obrey? Here. Parker? Here. Pasqualini? Here. Powers? Here. Quinn? Sleeker Hussant? Here. Steinford? Here. Irma Streeter? Here. Jim Streeter? Here. Swindell? Here. Wagner? Here. Wells? Here. Williams? Wilson? Here. And Newsom? 34 present. 34 members present. I declare a quorum. Will everyone please si rise for a moment of silence and a salute to the flag? And I ask that you please keep those touched by the tragedy in Las Vegas in your thoughts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business approval of the September 13th RTM meeting minutes. There are a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Motion has been moved and seconded to. Seconded. Motion has been moved and seconded to approve the September 13th, 2017 RTM meeting minutes. Is there any discussion on those meeting minutes? Representative Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, for human uh, resources, it's uh, it says ten. Uh, the function is ten fifteen. It should be ten fifty one. Are you talking about the agenda? Are you talking about oh. uh, the finance committee agenda tonight, Representative Bailey? Uh, yes, okay. I'm a little ahead of the game. Yeah, Sorry. we'll get to that. Sorry, that's okay. Any other discussion on the September thirteenth RTM meeting minutes? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of approving the meeting minutes for the September 13th, 2017 RTM mm -hmm. meeting, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Parker. No. Motion carries 3202. Hmm. Next assistance petitions. This is the portion of the RTM agenda where the RTM uh, welcomes comments from citizens. Each presentation should be limited to 10 minutes or less, and citizens should, if possible, submit written comments. Presentation should be limited to matters pertinent to Groton. The moderator or members through the moderator shall ask questions only in order to clarify the speaker's presentation. Responses may be given by the moderator and or by the town manager. Citizens should make their presentations from the lectern and state their names and addresses for the record. We have one speaker tonight. Jean-Claude. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Jean-Claude Amboise. I live at 169 Shenacosset Parkway in Groton. Uh, just as an update, uh, I've been attending the uh, CRC public hearing through the town council and also uh, the meeting that they had yesterday to start uh, initial discussions about the Charter Revision Commission. Uh, some of the things that I had heard were a bit frightening. Uh, by some of the members of the town council who have already rubber stamped this action. Um, there's at least four, if not five, that have already decided that their mind is made up without any uh, real deliberations. Um, for example, uh, most are still in support of abolishing this body here, the RTM. 
the main reason is they want to uh, substitute it with a budget referendum. Um, and they also uh, believe that you all don't show up to your meetings. And it looks like right here, we have plenty of people here at this meeting, about 31 out of the, 31 out of the 40. 34. Um, yeah, 34, wow, it's, it's very high. So um, I don't know where that uh, statistic is, is coming from, but um, looks like you're ready to serve. I appreciate all of you that did attend uh, the public hearing and spoke out, uh, whether it was for or against, and I appreciate all the citizenry uh, that did it as well. Um, I'm gonna stick to the two positives that I heard out of that uh, meeting yesterday. One of them was uh, from one town council that asked the question to the body, what's broken with the current government system? And to my knowledge, I haven't heard that response by the Charter Vision Commission, except that the RTM doesn't show up to their meetings, which I can see right now that a whole lot of you do. Um, that is a bit of a concern for me, um, that they're, they're taking this uh, message and, and moving it forward on a false premise. Uh, another one uh, that I had was about um, uh, Town Councilor uh, Flax had mentioned something about we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. And in, in my opinion, if we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here, we're making about seven or eight radical changes to the Groton system of government um, in order to appease individuals that have you know, personal motives. They want to reduce their taxes. And again, reducing taxes alone is not going to make this town stronger. We have to have a holistic approach to uh, governing this town. We have a very diverse community. Um, as uh, Rep. Bailey had mentioned, you can go through all different parts of town and see a whole different slice of life. And that's what I like about this town. And unfortunately, if we were to eliminate the RTM and establish a board of finance, it is going to be managed and consolidated into the hands of very few that have one I idea and agenda in mind, which is reducing taxes. And that's not going to be good for Groton. Uh, so, I appreciate all of you attending. Um, the next meeting that they will be having is at the Town Hall Annex tomorrow, um, not tomorrow, on Tuesday, uh, next week. And I encourage all of you to attend, as well as all the citizens of all of the town of Groton to attend this meeting, to speak out and let your voice be heard. Thank you. 6 p.m. Thank you very much. That meeting is at 6 p.m. And I would definitely encourage <clears throat> Uh, all of you to come and uh, express your opinion. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on. Reception of communications. Representative Marr called and told me she would not be here tonight. Report to the town manager. Good evening. For the financial report, the uh, preliminary fund balance as of June 30th, unaudited as a reminder, is approximately 10.9 million, which is 9.1% of the FYE 2018 general fund adopted budget. The uh, general fund contingency budget for FY 2018 was appropriated at 650,000, which may change here soon. The capital reserve fund balance as of September 30th is estimated at 842,533, again, unaudited. Uh, I was asked last month about the Groton ambulance roof. Um, the blue tarp had been up for a while. There had been some delays on that project that is underway and should be done soon. So uh, it looks like it's coming along really well last I saw. Uh, just to uh, mention that we're going to be working soon on an illicit discharge ordinance. The state's requiring we have one put in place by the end of June next year. Uh, essentially. Uh, what it does is it sets fines and penalties and remediation costs for any discharge of non-allowed substances. And at, as we get further into it, I can have someone from Public Works come and give a brief update on that as we get to that point. Uh, I went to the AOPA flying event at the airport last weekend, great event. Um, it looks like a lot of attendance. I reached out to them just to find out how many planes and how many people were there for the two days, but I haven't received a word back yet, but um, it was a great event. The letter I got. The letter I got today said over 6,000. Okay, yeah, it, it was great. I had some really, really uh, interesting, great planes there. And it looks like a lot of great sessions there. Um, 
uh, note, uh, mentioned that uh, at Stanton Farms Playground, they had to close that down due to some uh, rusted out decking that rusted right through. They're getting uh, estimates to replace the rusted section, so hopefully that'll be back up soon. Uh, I wanted to mention the, the uh, Groton Human Services is working with the TVCCA for an energy assistance program, uh, providing uh, assistance with costs for heating sources, including oil, natural gas, electricity, propane, kerosene, coal, and wood. Um, you must meet the income guidelines set at 150% of the federal poverty level, which is approximately 37,000 for a family of four. You can call Groton Human Services for more information. And then a uh, mention of the library is going to have a bumper and books, um, uh, kind of like a, a trunk or treat kind of thing on October 21st from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. They'll be having a contest for people decorating their trunks and uh, passing out candy. You have to be registered for that. And then they're trying to encourage people to dress like in book themed kind of costumes and decorate the cars that way. But you can call uh, Miss Kim at 860-441-6750 if you're interested in participating in that. Uh, and that's all I have. I'm sorry, oh. Mr. Manager, what night is the, the trunk or treat? What's that? What night is that? It is Saturday, October 21st from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. So it's during the day. Rain, rain date the next day. The, the junior friends of the Groton Library are, are the ones sort of heading that up. Anybody have any questions for the town manager? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, before we go any further, something I should have done earlier, Representative Spada. Raise your hand. So Representative Spada is joining us. He is uh, taking Representative Watrous's place who resigned. So welcome, Representative Spada. Thank, Thank you for your service. <laughs> Report of the superintendent. Good evening. Uh, I uh, distributed uh, uh, a, a bit of a report, but I, I thought I'd uh, kind of give you a little bit of an update. Uh, in terms of staffing, we have a new principal now. Uh, Mr. Jeff Katecki is the new principal of uh, Westside uh, Middle School. Jeff was the assistant principal there, has been the assistant principal there for 10 years, and uh, we had a really a, a very good pool of candidates, and he was uh, selected. And, this afternoon, we started to interview, uh, actually to select uh, the, uh, the interview uh, candidates. Uh, 98 people have applied for the assistant principal job at, at, at Westside. Uh, so the committees have a little bit of uh, work uh, to do. But uh, as I said to them, if we don't get a terrific assistant principal, shame on us. Uh, we have, a, we have plenty, of, plenty of really good, uh, good people. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is, uh, you may have seen this in the paper, but we had a, a, a quite a, a a regal ceremony. The the deputy Lord Mayor of London came uh, to officially invite the Fitch Music Music Program uh, to uh, perform in the 2019 New Year's Day Parade and Music Festival, and he came in full regalia gowns ermine covered and it was a really quite a quite, quite an event and uh, but he explained to us uh, that a parade that that some of us may have heard uh, that takes place around Thanksgiving in New York hosted by a certain department store has uh, 4,000 the New London parade has 8,000 people it's the biggest uh, parade in the world seen by uh, multiple millions of people uh, about a just in London itself. So uh, needless to say, the, the students uh, have started their fundraising and extremely excited. Uh, we, we, we anticipate uh, approximately 100 to 150 students will, will travel to England and perform in the marching band and the orchestra and the chorus. And so it should be, should be really a, a, a terrific event. Uh, three high schools were invited uh, from th this country. It, it, the Fitch Band, as you may remember, went to the Nationals uh, last year at Giant Stadium in, in, in New York. Um, and so it, it was uh, selected as one of the top uh, uh, top music uh, uh, performing uh, groups in, in the country. Um, but the, I, I guess the, 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 the really huge news is that uh, in late September, uh, we received word about a grant that we put in. There's a federal education department uh, grant uh, 
um, that w is called the, the Magnet School Assistance Program, MSAP. And it, it, it was uh, money that was offered through the uh, Department of Education to expand magnet opportunities, to expand choice. And one of the eligible uh, items that you could apply for was to expand choice within your district. And so we put in a grant to expand uh, both uh, uh, Cutler Middle School and Westside Middle School and make them open to all children, all middle school children in, in Groton. Westside to become a STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics school, and Cutler to become an arts and humanities uh, school, magnet school. And we, we did a little bit of initial research, although we knew it was going to take a fair amount of money, uh, to, to have uh, Cutler form partnerships with Mystic Seaport, Eugene O'Neill Theater, the Mystic Museum of Art, and that partnership uh, on paper was established. And then uh, to have uh, to have Westside have a robotics program and Project Lead the Way, which is an engineering program, uh, and much to our delight, uh, we were awarded four million dollars. Uh, we're actually actually part of a consortium. There are seven. There are a couple of schools from Norwich was in it, a couple of schools from New London, uh, and and a, a couple of the the Warren schools. So we, uh, we were delighted to receive the $4 million. And what I've done is I've kind of given you a little bit of um, a FAQ here uh, about what the grant will do. It, it will allow us to, to expand uh, our international baccalaureate program uh, to both uh, middle schools. So then when they become the consolidated middle school in three years, uh, both both faculties will, will be trained uh, and, and then become, uh, operate as an international baccalaureate. All sixth to 10th graders uh, will, will be offered international baccalaureate. Uh, so uh, it, it's a great program, but it's relatively expensive to get started. It's not expensive to keep going, but you have to train everybody. And so uh, we received uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to, uh, to train the faculties. And, get the equipment and do what needs to be done uh, to get these uh, schools up. So we anticipate uh, next fall, uh, we plan next fall to operate a West Side open to all students uh, as a STEM school and Cutler uh, open to all students in Groton as a arts and, and humanities school. And the, the organization of this was there already is a, uh, a magnet school on the west side of town, uh, Catherine Kolnowski, where students study science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So, so that pathway will come up uh, through west side. And, and uh, uh, Northeast Academy is already a performing arts school. So those children will uh, take, take the arts education and, and go up and then uh, ultimately come, come to the high school where we have excellent uh, STEM programs and, and, and arts programs. Um, and so I just threw some questions down here. Do we, do we need the staff right away? And of course the answer is yes, because we have to, we have to hire coordinators and we have, to, actually, we have to actually plan all these STEM and, and, and arts activities and that will, that will begin. Uh, actually we're in the process of uh, posting those jobs now. Um, and then I know uh, some of the town councilors were, had a question about what happens to these magnet schools when we become one uh, mi mi middle school in, in 2020. And, and the answer is that there will be pathways in the new middle school. So students will e enter a pathway, uh, uh, either a STEM pathway or an arts pathway, and, and perhaps other pathways as, as, we, uh, as we develop the programs as we move forward. Um, and we, unfortunately, uh, as you probably know, uh, we still have no budget. So Groton 2020 essentially is at a standstill. We, the money is, has been uh, allocated, uh, but the bonding commission hasn't yet voted. So no, no action is, uh, is uh, being taken. An architectural firm was selected, but no one has been hired yet because we, we don't have the uh, we don't have the, the, the money. And then on the back, I spent a couple hours with this today. I was hoping to give you something better than a handwritten scribble, uh, but this is the best I could come up with. Uh, uh, 
So let me, let me just go through this quickly. Uh, on the top of the page, uh, you see I've sort of scribbled in uh, FY18. Uh, the total number of administrators last year was uh, 33.5, and the total number of administrators that we currently have is 30. We, we uh, because of the $2.8 million cut, we, we cut two central office administrators and one, uh, one principal the principal of uh, Pleasant Valley School. And, and there was a half of administrator that, uh, tech, tech, it wasn't really administrator, it was a, a medical advisor to, to the board, and that, that half was sort of stuck in there. But we've actually eliminated that as well. So uh, we have three and a half less I administrators. And then in terms of the teachers, uh, I mentioned a, a few times, uh, l last year we had 330, this year we have 308. Uh, so we, we, we eliminated uh, 22 uh, positions, uh, same number of, uh, same number of uh, special ed uh, teachers is there. But of course, one less media specialist because we have one less school. Uh, and if you, uh, I guess if you add all that up, it's uh, 22, 23, uh, it's about 26 and a half uh, positions and that 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 is the the lion's share of of the uh, of the of the salary cut that that we we uh, uh, we were able to uh, do th this this past year. Uh, on the bottom of this sheet, uh, we have a new business manager, and this this is uh, this is a reflection uh, th this the sheet. And, and I have to uh, acknowledge. Uh, Mr. Kent, once upon a time, uh, said, said to me that there are 98.5 people in the central office, and and I was stunned because I, 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 I didn't know there were 98 people there. I only see about 30 something. Uh, but then I realized what the column says is it's district wide, and so there are all the maintenance guys that are, of course, not in the central office, and all the custodian guys, and so. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to reorganize this and, and, and give you a, an, an accurate reflection. But I, but I, I can tell you the one, the one thing that we're still struggling with um, are, are the number of paraprofessionals. Uh, uh, those of you, uh, you, you've probably heard this, uh, this speech a few times before, but when, when, when children uh, are identified as having special education needs, uh, they have a plan that is written for their education called an individual education plan, an IEP. And uh, uh, frequently, uh, school systems will write into that plan that the, that the child needs a paraprofessional to support him or her. And I know that we have received uh, about a, an additional eight this fall uh, that uh, the, the IEP indicated there had to be a a, a paraprofessional. So we are literally in the process, I just heard of another one yesterday, literally in the process of, uh, of, of sort of settling that. B but it comes and goes, you know, as I always like to say, kids move in with high needs and kids move out. And so it, it's, a, it's a bit of a moving target. It, that, that happens with the paraprofessional account. It really doesn't happen, typically, thankfully, uh, with any other account. So administrators or the administrators, that's what we have, three and a half less. And the teachers, uh, we have, uh, as I say, tw 23 uh, less teachers. So that's my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions for the superintendent? <coughs> Representative Kent. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Grenier, uh, as you know, we've had this request out for quite some time. Uh, can we get this updated as a spreadsheet? In other words, a soft copy? When I'm. Uh, could you paraphrase that? Yeah, send me the file. I'm not, I'm not sure because I think that's a product of our former business manager, but I'll try. Okay, because you've, you've, you've I'm manually give you, updated. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna give you the, I'm gonna give you the real one that will be in this year's book. Okay, but Maybe it'd be nice be to have a soft helpful. copy. Because if you do an analysis, then you have to rekey in all that data. Right, that's right. And uh, it irritates people. Also, uh, you gave us page 4.2. Four two. Could we have 4-1? And uh, as, as you referred, we certainly need the, uh, the breakdown of the non-cert aids, clerical, right. et cetera. Right, right. And ideally, uh, we'd like to see this recast, which are the uh, uh, classroom by school. You do. As you recall, Oh, these. sure. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you wanted that. Sure, I'd be happy to send you that. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you have that because you I were, do. by now you should know where your kids I do. are sitting Love in class. It. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and what is the current school population in the enrollment? 4,000, well, I don't know the magnet school. I was gonna bring that tonight too. Uh, the way enrollment is, is uh, handled in the state of Connecticut, uh, is through the public, uh, public school information system, PSIS. And the PSIS report must be submitted by Friday. Uh, and so what we have are the number of children who are resident to our school system and the number, uh, but what we don't know are the number of children who attend magnet schools. And, and that, that number tends to balance out uh, so, so that we, we have a, about 4,900 students. Uh, that's been a sort of a bit of contention with the, with, the dist, with the district and the governor, which I politely pointed out to him, uh, that he indicated that the population was down by 10% and, and, and it is not down by 10%. Uh, it, it was down by one half of a percent. Uh, because of course, when a child goes to a magnet school, the board is responsible for the tuition for that student. So, so those students for education cost sharing purposes uh, count as Groton students, e even though they may go to school in, in, uh, at a Wern facility, for example. So uh, they, the magnet schools, have to put in their report on Friday. It, it, it then gets verified on the 30th of October. So the next time I'm back, I will certainly be able to give you, I hope, the, 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 uh, the actual count. Thank you. Oh. Representative Kent, I would just request that you please follow up with an email of what you want specifically so that uh, nothing gets lost in the translation to the superintendent and uh, please make sure I'm on copy. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Laughlin. Yes, sir. <clears throat> this uh, trip to London for the orchestra and the chorus, is that going to be financed by the city of London? Uh, no. It is going to be financed primarily by the students. By the students? Uh, yeah. Uh, and so what we, uh, well actually, the, what, what the band boosters is trying to do is, is raise about a third of the fee for everybody. So make, make it a little bit more reasonable. It's about $3,000 uh, for, for, the, for the week, about a, uh, a $3,000 uh, trip. So we're trying to raise, they are trying to raise uh, about $1,000 uh, per student. Uh, and then the, the family. But we're also trying to do some fundraisers that we, we know that there are some families that certainly cannot afford that. And so we're, we're, we're trying to do keeping that in mind as we're doing fundraising and trying to get sponsors. And so they have a pretty aggressive campaign out there that, that, that is going on. And of course, we, we have a year and a half. Well, we have well, like 15 months. An expensive honor. It is, <laughs> it is an expensive honor, right, right. Uh, but but I, I, I'll tell you, as, as they, they spoke uh, about the, the, the trip, uh, students uh, will, will tour all, all of London and Stonehenge and all that. Uh, and then I know the choir becomes part of an international choir that will perform in Westminster Abbey, uh, about six or 700 voices. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. But, but you're right, it, it's in, it, that's an intimidating price and, and, and will be a really a difficult uh, thing for, for, for many students. But f fortunately, uh, they told us early enough, they actually told us in August, they, they informally invited us in August. So, so they, the, the music boosters and, and kids individually have already started their, their fundraising. And, uh, and we're inviting, we invited to, to that ceremony the, the eighth grade students. Uh, so the eighth grade students will be ninth graders by, by that time. Um, and so there, there could be a, a, good, uh, a good crew of people uh, that, that will attend this. But you're right, it's an expensive honor. <laughs> Somebody's gotta pay for that ermine. Are there any other questions for the superintendent? Representative Evans. Thank you, Ron. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I noticed here you show that you have 14 assistant principals, although you have nine principals. I can see where you have three in the high school. I can understand that. I don't understand why I show uh, three assistant principals at the central office. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, they're not there. Uh, 
or they're well hidden for the last four years. I, I, it's, it's a, I think what that is, is a reflection of, to tell you the truth, well, I know what it is, joking aside. Uh, we, have, we have three special education uh, the assistant directors, especially one, one, one for the high school program, one for the early childhood program, and, 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 and one for essentially out, out of district. That, that's what it is. Hmm. Yeah, the, that, I mean, that's what I meant with, to, to Mr. Kent. We're, we're going to try to give you a, a, a much clearer picture of who these people are uh, be, because clumping everybody in district wide doesn't, doesn't make any sense because, uh, you know, we, they're, they're not in the central office. Any other questions for the superintendent? Representative Mandel. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, in moving toward the uh, magnet schools in the middle schools, uh, how, what kind of accommodation will there be for the perhaps rare student who is deeply interested in exploring both science and humanities? It seems to me by tracking yeah. these things, right, right. you're limiting that. It's, it's an excellent question. Um, when, when I say there's going to be a pathway, uh, for example, at the elementary school, I can explain best by telling you that when a child goes to Catherine Kolnowski, STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, or goes to the, the performing arts, they get the exact same literacy program, they get the exact same science curriculum, they get the exact same social studies, and they get the uh, exact same uh, language arts program. What, what happens at Northeast Academy is, for example, 100% of those children are, are in the chorus. Uh, so it, it is very much not a focus, but an opportunity. Uh, so at the middle school, what, what will happen is students, and, and at the high school uh, as well, students who, who have those dual interests uh, will certainly be able to pursue them. Uh, but there will be opportunities. Not every child that will be in the arts program will be performing at the Eugene O'Neill Theater. And not necessarily every student that's in the STEM program will be part of a Project Lead the Way engineering or robotics class. So they'll be able to balance that. that will, they won't be tracked in that way that they'll, you know, they'll be blocked from opportunities. It's really more of having additional opportunities if they pursue it. And there'll probably be a at least one third, uh, third opportunity for children t to be essentially engaged in neither of those and just be open to all the opportunities in the school. So I'm not, I'm not uh, we won't pigeonhole the students. Representative Parker. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Dr. Kinnear, um, question about the IB program. Yes. Do they all have to Will all the middle school students have to take it? 100%. But, but what if, is it, isn't it a higher program? No, that, I love this question. Well, <laughs> Thank you for asking it. Uh, the big criticism of Fitch uh, years ago was that the International Baccalaureate Program, and at the high school it's a diploma program, uh, was uh, really designed for the elite, you know, super, super smart student, and nothing could be farther from the truth. Uh, I, I went to a, a conference a while ago, and I, I met a principal uh, of a school, 98% free and reduced lunch, 98% African American, and 100% international baccalaureate. And I started to think, hmm, this doesn't fit the pattern. And what I realized was, especially at the middle level, that what you, what you do is all the children are given an opportunity to learn how to learn, to do extensive writing, not, not the smarter of the kids, all, all the kids. All kids take world language, special ed, no matter what. Every student takes one of eight uh, subjects. And so it's, it's more, a, it's more a, of a philosophy and a delivery system as opposed, I mean, there'll still be levels of classes and, and, and so forth, but we believe that this is gonna level the playing field and give every child an opportunity to re really develop and ask questions. It's science is 100% inquiry based. You know, many of us, uh, I suspect, uh, remember memorizing stuff in biology, and they don't uh, do stuff like that. They, they give kids problems, and they have to solve sort of them. solve them. All right. 
my, well, my concern is that some of the kids aren't going to, even though it's going to be across the board, my concern is that they're not going to learn it as well as they can. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. I understand your concern. Uh, and what we are experiencing, uh, certainly at the high school level and, and, and what we've seen in visiting other uh, middle schools is, the, the way the courses are designed makes it accessible to the student. At, you know, in other words, a good inquiry approach uh, works at the kindergarten level as well as at the high school level. And uh, it, it is not necessarily the, the, I mean, there are skills. I, I, I don't mean to suggest that skills don't count. But when you, when you, ask, when you ask children to solve real life problems and, and figure out what they need to do in terms of math or, or science, uh, it's amazingly engaging, and, and, and children, even with limited academic skills, uh, can have access to that. All right. Thank you. But it's a concern, and thank you for bringing it up. Any other questions for the superintendent, Representative Seney? Thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm just trying to, to keep up and understand this a little bit. So, um, Representative Kent, I hope I have that name right, yeah. um, he had asked for new paperwork and all that. When would we be getting that? Like, the, you said the next time that you're here, but... Well, what I meant by the next time is that I can give you the PSIS numbers. For, I, I don't have the magnet numbers yet. Uh... But he, if, you're, if you're referring to this chart, we, yes. which is really sort of a hodgepodge, what we started was, the, the, we, we actually started uh, last week, the, the actual way it's going to be shown in the book this year, which is going to be much easier to understand. The, the problem why I had to spend a little bit of time today was it, 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 it doesn't match up because it, in one case we have tutors uh, in, in one system and we didn't count tutors in, in, in the same categories in the other system, and putting them next to each other is problematic. I think what I would rather do is show you, these are the personnel that we have. These are the, the administrators and teachers are sort of easy. Uh, it, it's some of these uh, non-certified that uh, are, are more difficult. C correct, so I'm trying to understand it a little bit. So what, is the, what does the DW mean under CO? District wide. District wide. Took me four months to figure that. Okay, out. so, so, um, all right. So this assistant principals at under that column was asked about, but then there's a adult ed. It's it's four point two five. Those are the four. Those are four point two five teachers that work in in uh, at the West Side uh, 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 Credit Diploma Program. But they're part-time. We certainly don't have full-time teachers there. So they belong under the west side column, west side middle column, and not under the CO column? Well, the CO column, be, because the, the adult ed program is not a west side program. It's, it's really a, a district okay. program. OK. And then, and then um, there's three custodians at, at central office? Well, there's one. Yeah, this is why I hate this chart. Uh, there's there's one custodian at central office. Yeah. There's one custodian that that's like a rover, and then there's there's one that I have to figure out uh, why he's in that column. I, I don't know. All right. So there's so, only one at, for sure. So so pretty much the the the, the chart is the chart is a little off. Yes. So but then what is what is the athletic director? It's it's sixth of a tenth. Yeah, six tenths of a, of a position. Yes. We have a 60% of a job that is the athletic director at the high school. Isn't that one? Isn't that one position? No, or well, it's, 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 it's not. What, well, 40% four, of his job is to yeah. teach, and 60% of his job yeah. is to be the athletic director. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. it's one person. All right. All righty. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully when you see the next chart, you'll be more understandable. Thank you. All right, what I would say is if there are any other questions about this chart, let's hold off and let the superintendent fix it and come back to us with another one. And um, there are probably, probably fewer questions. Anything else for the superintendent? Thank you very much, Dr. Greener. For what it's worth, if anyone's watching on TV, 
I love coming to this body. This is where I think, uh, I, I, for a guy who grew up in Midtown Manhattan, this is as close to a New England town meeting, and I, I think this is the epitome of democracy, and I hope to come here for many years to come. It, it's, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. For those folks watching on TV, you're probably not going to get this kind of detail at a board or a finance meeting. <laughs> but I digress. Director Reiner, I apologize. I skipped over you. Would you like to provide an economic development update? Yes, please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. I have just a few things I want to go over with you tonight in uh, detail. So it's been a few months since uh, we came and talked to you and given you an update of some of the programs and progress that we're making on things. So uh, we think that it's really important that when we come to you and ask you for money every year during the budget, you don't see us just then, but then we actually come and tell you a little bit about some of the things that we're doing with that money for those projects that you've allocated over the last couple of years. So uh, before I get into some of the specific projects, if you've been driving around Groton a bit, you've probably seen a lot of construction activity happening. Things are happening all over town. Uh, we actually had a meeting today with uh, the developers of Central Hall. So as you probably saw over the spring, they built the, the foundation that's over the water of where the, the building's gonna go. And what they told us today is that in the next two to three weeks, they're gonna start construction. Steel beams are gonna be going up and then from there, they can build the rest of the structure. So finally, after 10, 12 years, we're gonna see some real progress with that moving forward. So we're really excited about that. It's gonna be four stories. First uh, floor of that building will be all commercial, and the top will be 12 uh, apartment or condo residential units. So I think that's gonna be really great for downtown Mystic. And uh, I'll get into some of the specifics of things that are happening, but Again, if you've been around downtown Mystic, you've probably noticed a lot more restaurants happening. Uh, restaurants are creeping down Water Street as there's getting to be more of a demand uh, in Mystic and it, be, it becoming more of a place just in the last couple of months. There was an article in the Boston Globe about how Mystic is becoming this new foodie destination for people all, all over New England. So get there soon before you, while you still can. So uh, a number of things happen around town. Uh, I'm sure everybody noticed the new Savings Institute building that was built uh, where the old uh, Ju Sushi was uh, right over on Route 1. Ju Sushi bought a piece of property diagonally across the road and they're uh, starting to begin construction on that. Walmart did some interior renovations which uh, they finished up recently. Uh, Gabriel's uh, did some work, some apartments and some other first floor renovations. Uh, Barley Head Brewery, that's one of those new uh, spots on Water Street in Mystic. Uh, Drawbridge 24, so the ice cream shop in Mystic. Before it was ice cream and sandwiches, uh, they kind of peeled off the sandwich shop and they opened up their own sandwich shop. So that uh, finished up uh, just recently. Uh, a number of buildings on Long Hill Road were recently renovated, modified, so the Pet Smart um, and a number of other units within that building. They did a whole facade improvement, the parking lot. What we're expecting is, and what we're hoping is that'll start becoming contagious to some of the other businesses along Route 1. Um, but I think that was a real great improvement with the Aldi's there and some other things. Uh, Mint Leaf, a new restaurant that opened up on Long Hill Road in the Bettings Plaza. If you haven't checked it out yet, I've heard really good things about it. So that's new and uh, done. Dunkin' Donuts on Paquanic Road just recently did some renovations. Uh, T-Mobile, KFC, Olio's Restaurant did some renovations there. Uh, Argea Cruises recently re relocated back to uh, the Groton side of Mystic. Uh, Andrea Bird Bridal Saloon, uh, Salon uh, opened, yeah, a little different there. Uh, slip, of the, slip of the tongue. Over on uh, Water Street, maybe, you know, back 100 years ago. Uh, Friar Tuck's Tavern also opened up on Water Street, so that's a new restaurant. Uh, some things that we're still seeing under construction, uh, Planet Fitness was adding an almost 8,000 square foot addition. Uh, Groton Multifamily Apartments over on Pleasant Valley Road and Route 12. If you've driven by there, you've seen uh, they're doing a lot of site work. That's going to be 147 new apartment units there. A lot of big boulders there, bigger than some of our cars. Uh, so they get some site work to do, but it's going very well. 
our Colonel Ledyard Estate Subdivision uh, over on Colonel Ledyard Highway, a 15 lot single family subdivision is under construction. The Hampton Inn on Long Hill Road is doing a facade improvement. U-Haul, uh, they're wrapping up that project, almost 100,000 square feet of air conditioned units. Uh, Long Meadow Landings, there's 22 apartment, apartments under construction. Uh, I said Central Hall. Um, and Mystic Business Park, they're adding a third building, uh, six buildings in total as part of that whole project, about 88,000 square feet. So they're adding the third out of six buildings there. And uh, Bow Wow's Bluff Point Dog Wash and Retail is opening up on uh, 35 Fort Hill Road. So somewhere else to take your dog if you need it taken care of. Um, some other things that we're anticipating coming up this year are Four Winds at Mystic Active Adult Community on No Ink Ledger Road, 219 units. That was something that was approved a while back. We're seeing that uh, resurrected. Some uh, micro apartments we're expecting on Water Street. Um, we do expect this year for Electric Boat to relocate into the old Pfizer cold storage building. So about a year ago, they moved into the old Caldor building. This upcoming year, we're expecting them to get into the building next door to that, um, as well as um, we're expecting some more Groton Village apartments, uh, 19 units, and uh, Beard and Mystic Cheese, both looking for manufacturing space. They're going to be locating in a new building on Leonard Drive. So a lot of things on the, the construction side of things. So it's not just planning and economic development and, and incentives, but there's a lot of things that are happening around town and still a lot of interest. We're meeting with a lot of applicants on new projects. So. A few of the initiatives I wanted to talk to you about, some things that uh, we'd gotten money either last year or the year before, uh, and the projects are moving full steam ahead and some of them are wrapping up. So um, a little weird that I'm using paper to talk about a web page, but I didn't know how much to tell you. This month we'll be launching the new economic development web page, so it'll be its own standalone web page focusing on economic development, a lot of the initiatives, the programs that we're working on. This is going to be our number one marketing tool for Groton to get the word out there. It's something that we desperately need. That market analysis that we spoke to you about that we completed about a year ago, that was the number one priority. It said get a, a, a specific presence on the web. So we've been putting a lot of work into that. Uh, it'll really uh, jump. I hope all of you check it out when we do uh, post that up at the end of this month. We've also been working on one of the items in our budget last year was to do some wayfinding signage. And what that means is how can you get yourself around Groton? How can we have consistent signage for directional, whether it's cars, pedestrians, bikes? So thinking of the pedestrian scale in Mystic as well as the driving scale in Mystic. Also, you come down from the exit off of 95 at exit 88 and 117. And you really don't know where, if, if you're not familiar with the area, we have a lot of transients that come here. People get confused. Where's the senior center? Where's the library, town hall, the annex, the police station? So we've been working on just the, the actual design of the signage, the layout, how we can create consistency with that signage. This is just the design and the program of it, pro, programming of it. This is about a $25,000 project this year. In our budget, we'll be coming to talk to you and as a CIP project, whether it's this year or next, to actually construct this and implement it, but it's something we want to show you. We'll give a more formal presentation just on the wayfinding signage once that uh, design wraps up in the next uh, few months. We've also been doing a lot of marketing for our public access properties. We've spoken to that about that before. The Mystic Ed Center, uh, Groton Heights, uh, the Sealy School, as well as uh, 517 and 529 Gold Star Highway. So for example, we've been advertising in the New England Real Estate Journal. Uh, we had a, a nice uh, story about the Mystic Ed Center. We'll be submitting uh, or releasing a request for proposals in the next couple of months, working with the state so we can finally get this property on the tax roll, paying a lot of taxes in Groton. We've gotten a tremendous amount of interest from a lot of developers on that property. I think we'll see uh, some really great proposals. We've also been doing some general marketing, creating brochures. How can we sell Groton? How can we put Groton on the map? You know, um, So these are just some general things that we'll be distributing to people as they move to town 
to developers that want to meet with us? How do they learn more about it? So just some of the things that we'll be showing off. These are still preliminary designs, but these will be wrapped up in the next couple of months. Uh, the town manager had mentioned that he went to the, uh, the event this weekend at the airport. We did get approval from the state on that airport development zone. I can't remember if we'd mentioned that to you before, but that's a new economic development incentive that's out there. No one's taken advantage of it yet, but it's a program that's there and people will as time moves on. Another project that we've been working um, with our surrounding municipalities as well as the Council of Governments is a joint land use study looking at the base, looking at how <coughs> Groton, Town, City, New London, Waterford, Ledyard, all the communities around the base are impacted by the base, how we can all work together and prepare for the future as we grow and as the base changes over time. So that's something that project is wrapping up uh, over the next couple of months. There's still some public comment period on this study. If uh, folks want to check it out, shoot me an email or uh, look it up on the web. Uh, the study's out there. Another project that we've been working on for a while, we're just finishing uh, reviewing the finalized uh, last draft, is a doing business in Groton guide. This is a resource guide for existing and new businesses that want to locate in Groton. They want to be here. This is a step-by-step -step process of how they get through our regulatory scheme, where to go for financing, have you started a business plan, a, a guide for new businesses or existing businesses that want to grow in our town. We think that this is going to be a really good tool uh, and just some, some extra uh, information for developers and businesses out there to help grow out and grow. Tax increment financing, we've been talking about that for a while. Uh, in the next month, month and a half, we expect to take a policy on tax increment financing to the town council. That's something I believe they'll be adopting via an ordinance. So the RTM will see that also. Uh, a number of folks have been showing up. We have an advisory committee on that made up of members of the community, uh, representatives from the RTM, the council. So this is something to give us an edge to help the town put a little bit of skin in the game as it as far as targeting development in certain areas in town. The two key areas that we're looking at within the town, uh, Route 1, we've been talking with developers there in that kind of big Y, Benny's area, as well as the Route 184, uh, 117 intersection up in the, the northern part of Center Groton. Developer there wants to do an $80 million mixed use development. I think that's gonna be a pretty good thing uh, for that area in Groton. We've also been working with the city and they are looking to jump into TIF also with us, uh, looking at both Thames Street as well as uh, the Five Corners area. So this is a really great opportunity for us in the town. Um, along the lines of the things that we're marketing, something that we bought, uh, brought before the Zoning Commission back in July or in August was we changed the zoning on the Sealy School. We've been trying to sell that property for a long time. It was always zoned residential. Well, now it's zoned uh, a lower intensity commercial consistent with the surrounding properties. We're still trying to work with the surrounding property owners, and we're hoping that in the next few months to year, we'll get some good proposals for a nice mixed-use development at that site, but that's something that uh, we're really excited about. We're also working with the city of Groton on a zoning text amendment so that we can look at a reuse at Groton Heights. That's something that we're going before uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission in the city this month, and that's something uh, Again, town's been talking about for a really long time. Action is happening on that. You've heard us talk a lot about the need for regulatory reform. We asked you for a lot of money a couple of years ago to redo our zoning regulations. Here's the, the draft of the zoning regulations. I'm not gonna read this to you tonight, but it's something that we're working on diligently. Uh, this has been drafted up by our consultants. We're going through it line by line, and we're taking it before our zoning commission. Uh, we actually have a meeting next Wednesday to really start diving into this. We did adopt the first key section, the Water Resource Protection District section of the regs, and now we're diving into it uh, section by section, and we hope that that'll be done within the next 12 to 18 months. Along those lines, something that the town council will be voting on in the next month or so is a combining of the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, looking to streamline that process. That's an ordinance that they would be passing to combine that. Again, that would be coming before the RTM, um, or you'd have the opportunity to review that. That's something we'll see uh, popping up in the next month or so. 
A few other uh, quick things, as I know you have other items on the agenda, I don't want to keep you here too long tonight. Uh, we did receive a $900,000 grant working with the City of Groton, New London, as part of the CT Next program. So after um, General Electric and other large business losses were happening in Connecticut, the state wanted to create um, new initiatives to help key places in the state become magnets for talent, supporting business growth and higher education, and focusing on more like growth stage companies. We were one of four regions in the state to get one of those grants, and it could be a multi-year grant. That's something that our economic development staff has been putting a lot of time into over the past year and a half. Um, as well as, I just want to make sure I get all the right things here. Um, we did get uh, this year again another $800,000 community development block grant um, from the state. In the last four years, we've received $2.4 million in CDBG funding for housing development in Groton. That's something really good. I don't think we do a good enough job cheerleading that uh, out there, but it's something that it's a lot of money that goes directly to help uh, renovate housing for those most in need uh, within Groton. And we've been doing a lot of outreach, uh, working with the Small Business Association, with a lot of our lenders in the area so that we can create programs so people, businesses know where to come if they want to grow their business and how they can uh, get money to actually do that. Um, one other item I did, uh, actually two other items I wanted to mention. We were doing a logo contest. Something else that was mentioned within uh, the market analysis was when you're branding the town, when you're trying to promote the town, Although we're all proud of the town seal, that's not something that developers or people are going to notice and jump out when you're thinking about Groton. So our economic development division working with the EDC did a logo contest um, and we ended up coming up with a new uh, logo for Groton. It's on a mug here. I would have brought one of the boards showing it off, but I was afraid it was going to rain and ruin the board. Uh, as I walked out of here. But it's Explore More is our new um, kind of tagline that goes along with it. It's something that we had someone local from Groton Design. We didn't spend uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on a design of something like Rhode Island, what was it? Cooler, warmer was the really bad one that tanked. I don't know if folks followed that. It was uh, it was pretty sad. So uh, and then one last thing I uh, have to mention is uh, last week uh, Paige Bronk, who's our uh, economic development manager, he's been here for about two years in Connecticut, and uh, he this year um, just last week was given the community the Connecticut Economic Development Association's Economic Development Official of the Year. So he's been doing a lot of good stuff. Uh, I'm very happy to have him as part of the staff. The things that we're doing in Groton in a very short period of time are things that other municipalities can't get done in 10 or 15 years. So we're doing a lot. We really appreciate the trust and faith that uh, all of you have had in us. Um, and thank you very much. We're having a great time working here. And um, happy to answer any questions on any of the items that we're working on. Director Reiner, that was an excellent report. Yep. <laughs> and the RTM said three years ago, you know, this is what we wanted to see, and it's coming to fruition. I appreciate it. A couple of things. Would it be possible to pass the mug down so everybody can get a chance? Yeah. To yeah. Don't You'll probably never see it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Thank you very much for your hard work. I know you've been you've been really hitting hard. Um, Representative McDermott. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John, I too am really pleased with uh, what you guys have done. It's been a, a great run. Uh, I'm not sure how much of the uh, redevelopment over in Mystic has contributed to the huge success of that area, but I, I think it probably has done something to make that happen. Even we who live over there are just amazed at what's going on. Um, I'm wondering if uh, that corridor along Route 1 and Long Hill Road can be spiffed up a little bit. Yes. You know, with signage or something, it's just uh, really drab and uninviting. And we're going to have a lot of people trooping through here with the electric boat, things that are going on and so forth. And I think it would behoove us to do something in that area. Yep. Uh, give us a little bit of time. 
as we're, okay. you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So All right. we're Just trying keep to focus. In yeah, no, it, that's certainly an area we want to see get improved, reinvestment, and we're trying to come up with the tools that we can. So, yes, definitely. Thanks. Thank you. Representative Pascaline. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, one question I have is a little disheartened with Sandlot. Okay. Um, I mean, I know they, the sign has been up there for a long time, and then I'd heard there was a thing regarding the sidewalk, and then that took a long time, and then that finally gets settled, and the plans go in, and now the fire marshal says the new law just came in. Now you got to change that. It just gives me flashbacks of the last group that we don't work with these developers and let them get their stuff in mm -hmm. and use common sense um, instead of having them jump hurdle after hurdle after hurdle because uh, it kind of turns them off. So that's um, actually a good question and um, it's funny, I, I had also asked about the uh, the sand lot, and one of my staff corrected me and said, no, that was the movie, it's the sand box, it's box. the place. I, I got it wrong too, <laughs> so I, I feel with you. Um, I believe they actually got a waiver from the state fire marshal's office. So these are new state regulations. There are right. things that we can waive, things that we can work with people. Um, our department supported waivers and got them through. I actually just had the paperwork on that on my desk that someone that uh, Kevin Quinn had given me a copy of because that same question had come up. I know that the um, owner of that business was trying to move it forward, doing things piece by piece. I had heard for a little while that he was thinking of selling it, th of the property, and I thought I had just heard that oh, they're trying to resurrect it and move it forward. So it's, I know it's been a little bit of a rocky start yeah, for that, them. That's the last I heard, and, and there, uh, I, I believe, don't get me the numbers wrong, there's like 300 teams that compete in this volleyball that, in tournaments that travel around, and that's what he's looking to host mm -hmm. here, besides providing mm -hmm. it for the base, the Coast Guard, the, the public, and even looking down the road for a hotel mm -hmm. because these teams all come from out of state to be able to host everything all in one location. Yeah. Um, and the second thing would be maybe you should look for an app and develop an app. Mm -hmm. Everybody uses the phone to hit the app for Mystic and everything will pop up that they need to look to find. Yeah. Well, after the website, we'll see what else we can create from a technology perspective, but thank you. Any other questions for Director Reiner? Representative Kent? Yeah, I have a suggestion on the signage uh, uh, or a question. Are you, are you working with the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, yes. Okay. You, uh, I volunteer there and I uh, meet maybe uh, 20 or 30 people in the morning. Uh, so I get a pretty good cross section of what people come to see. Mm -hmm. And no one ever comes to see Groton. Yeah. And they, they don't come to see Stonington, they come to see Mystic or maybe the sub base, yeah. or uh, they want to go to Noank or uh, Mystic Village or the Aquarium. But no one wants to, they don't know Groton exists. And uh, you may not be able to change that, but you should pick back on the, uh, on the, greater, uh, the greater Mystic area and in the whole Southeast area. Mm -hmm and uh, coordinate with your signage and a lot of your promotions. Oh, definitely. No, and that's something we're certainly doing, uh, working with uh, the GBA, uh, the Mystic Chamber. They're reviewing these with us, um, the designs of the signage. That's something we're certainly doing and utilizing the brand of Mystic. I mean, that, that's, that's a, a very well-known, that's a national known brand, so that's something we're not discounting. You might want to analyze their visitor logs, too. It'll give you an idea who's coming from where and yeah. why. Okay. Okay. Representative Swindell, did you have a question? Oh, thanks. Well, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I know you mentioned the, uh, the grant for uh, coordinating the activities between Groton and New London and I know there is a pretty active movement to enhance sort of the biotechnology entrepreneurship. Yes. And I was just wondering if you could give us uh, an update on how close we are to seeing some uh, success from that program. So um, that CT Next program, four grants were given out. 
I think we are the only uh, group that has signed all their contracts with the state. We're the only group that's just hired an executive director. So it's been all people trying to pull this together as part of their other full-time jobs and, and doing this. I expect over the next few months we'll see more things happen. With that said, we are already meeting with and seeing new businesses that want to and that are locating here in Groton to build upon the innovation that we have, looking at uh, the defense industry that we have. So uh, a, a newer company that's small and is going to be growing quite a bit, uh, Thayer Mahan, is going to be locating in town. They have a ribbon cutting, I think, next week or the week after. They're creating basically um, these almost like underwater surfboards that are going to help locate submarines. And it's the defense contracting. We're seeing more of those types of things happen. Anybody else have any questions for the director? Very well, I have a couple. What's the prognosis for the Benny's property? Yeah. Uh, Sorry. I, yeah. I had to ask. I, I don't know yet. Um, actually, we did meet with the owner uh, of the, the larger plaza, and he said that he's been showing it to a few folks already. So although I don't know how long Benny's will be around, it's kind of mixed stories in the news. One thing, they're open. Next, they're not. Um, I think we'll see that space get filled up pretty quick. We don't have a lot of great new space in town, but there, the vacancies aren't sticking around for that long in desirable areas. I think we're going to see some turnover in that site, especially once we get that TIF program in place. That's going to give incentive for not only just filling up something, but total redevelopment projects. But I think we'll see something in Benny's shortly after, uh, they, if they do close after this holiday season. And I may be getting ahead of myself, but with all of this great, all these great things that are happening, do you see any positive impact on the grand list next year? <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping the Mystic Ed Center, um, those apartments up on uh, Route 12, that 147 apartments, that's going to be uh, a nice addition to the grand list. All those other things that uh, I mentioned, some other uh, smaller apartment <coughs> complexes, the um, facade improvements, the additions to uh, now the what I'll call the Aldi's Plaza, um, as well as um, that U-Haul facility, 100,000, it was 92, 93,000 square feet. That's a pretty expensive space there. Little things, but they're adding up, and as you, each year goes on, and oh yeah, once Central Hall goes in, I'm sure they're going to be paying a, a pretty penny in taxes, too. Sounds like things are going in the right direction yeah. <laughs> for change. Um, if I could ask one last thing, or did anybody have a, a question? Representative Parker. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Savings Institute, what's going to happen to the old building? I don't know yet. That plaza needs a little love. Um, <laughs> The it's the gone theater. through a whole lot. Yeah. So we've got to spiff it up. Yes. It, now that's something, that property almost turned over about two years ago. And at some point, if the property owners don't reinvest in it, it it's going to lose its value. And then they're going to end up selling. So unfortunately, that property, as well as some of the other big properties, like are owned by. Like the movie theater? Yeah. Well, so one entity owns that whole site. And they're a national entity. And although we've spoken with them before about what their long range plans are, they don't have any plans right now. Okay. So if we can create incentives like tax increment financing, that'll get other developers interested in those types of sites. They'll see that they can make money off of it. And then it's going to be outside investment that's going to come in and, and hopefully turn something like that over. But that's big on my on, on our to-do list. Representative, Representative Obrey. Uh, just a quick question, if I can. We all don't want to be here We're all night. It's a great presentation. But could you give us an update on what's happening across from the EB um, Keldor location? I guess that's how you call it. I mean, they've come in, they've done the surveying, they've come in, they've drilled the ground to check the soil. You know, can you tell us what the plans are? So um, the town, 
two, three years ago, was working with the state and the Council of Governments to look at can there be a reconfiguration of the roadway over there to help with some of the traffic calming. Uh, before my time, the town had done a much larger study of that uh, whole stretch there of uh, Bridge Street, Kings Highway area. That first project is something that's being looked at and being designed right now, working with DOT and our Public Works Department. It um, would be as you come across, so uh, down Bridge Street, it would be a little bit of a reconfiguration of Bridge Street. It's still on the design phase. I think sometime in the next two or three months, we'll have some plans that we can preliminarily show folks to say, all right, here's what we're looking at, here's what we're thinking, and moving forward from there. But uh, you're not gonna see any pavement being moved in the next few months. Thank you. Any other questions? Representative Evans. Talking about Bridge Street and the reconfiguration, uh, right now all the people that Caldor is building that's turned into a parking lot that is far on both sides of the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that bad now, but when winter comes, no place to put snow, never mind all the cars that are parking out there now. Yeah. No, we've gotten some complaints about that recently. It's uh, something we're going to look into. Any other questions for the director? I would, um, I would ask Mr. Manager, Mr. Director, would, if it would be possible, with all the great information you put out, to maybe put something together that we can put in the, the meeting minutes for this meeting, some of the highlights of the, of the things you're talking with your permission, Mr. Manager. Uh, it's a lot of great information, and we want to get it out. So, I, Actually, I just emailed a whole report of that to the manager, I think, on Friday. So you'll see it in probably the next... Uh, manager's packet or in your next Perfect. packet. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you. And who stole my cup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there any leads on reports tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on. Committee reports, finance, Chairman Alt. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The uh, RTM Finance Committee met tonight uh, at 6.30. We uh, had a quorum. The meeting was called to order at 6.36. Present were myself, <laughs> Representative Gilly, Representative Pasqualini, and Representative Powers. Uh, also in attendance were um, the uh, Town Finance Director uh, and the Town Director of Human Resources. Uh, the Democratic and Republican floor leaders, Representatives Obrey and McDermott. We didn't have any unfinished business, and we moved on to the uh, new business, which was referral 20170209. Uh, that was moved uh, for approval by Representative Pasqualini, seconded by Representative Gilly, and uh, we opened the floor for discussion. I started out by reading the entire referral verbatim. And uh, would you like me to do that now, or you want to? Go ahead right now. What's that? Wait, give, do your minutes first. Okay. Okay. Do the minutes. We'll approve the minutes, and then we'll okay. Read the whole thing. So um, after reading the uh, referral, uh, there was a bunch of discussion uh, among the various committee members and uh, Cindy Landry and Bob Zagami. Uh, a lot of the discussion was between uh, Representative Pasqualini and Rep and Mr. Zagami about. Um, did we save any money with all of these contracts? You can see them all listed there. Uh, when the negotiations were going on, Mr. Zagami indicated that we did. Uh, part of that was due to high deductible uh, health care plans that were implemented, and then some other concessions that they were able to get during the uh, negotiations. Um, there was some d discussion about uh, arbitration and that whole process. Um, and the state budget that came up a number of times, or lack thereof, actually. Um, uh, Representative Pasqualini emphasized that despite the, the fact that he's a union guy, that the unions need to be more realistic when they're doing their budget negotiations, um, and uh, we need to be as tough as possible to, uh, in, when we're negotiating. And then uh, I asked a question which was on my mind, 
with this huge potential cut coming down from the state, is there any way that we could delay this vote, um, perhaps until we know what the budget numbers are looking like, and then vote on it? And uh, the finance director indicated that we really can't do that because some of these are re retroactive raises. Uh, and in fact, if we pass this now, it'll make the fiscal year 19 budget for next year a lot cleaner because all of these contracts will be paid for and settled and uh, we won't have as much open business as we did this year. Um, Representative McDermott asked if we, the RTM, could get an overview of these labor, labor agreements, you know, maybe some bullet points about the different provisions in the, in the agreements. And uh, Mr. Zagami indicated that he already has a lot of that information uh, in that form, and so he and uh, the town finance director discussed it, and they're going to try and put something together to um, make it clear to all of us exactly what the different provisions are in these contracts. Um, that was the end of discussion. A vote was taken, and it passed uh, four in favor, zero opposed, and zero abstentions. Uh, there was a motion to adjourn, seconded. Uh, motion by Representative Pasqualini, seconded by myself, and we adjourned at 7.02. So you'd like to be, uh, move the meeting minutes? Mr. Moder Moderator, I'd like to move the meeting minutes. Is there a second? second. Motion's been moved and seconded to approve the meeting minutes for the October 11, 2017 Finance Committee meeting. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote on the meeting minutes. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. And we are now at 32 members. Okay, Representative Nolte. I'd like to move uh, referral 20170209, contingency transfer for wage increases. I'm going to uh, go ahead and read it. Okay. Resolution for fiscal year 18 general contingency transfers, whereas the town charter provides for general contingency transfers during the year, and whereas during the FY18 budget deliberations, only the labor agreements for the CILU telecommunicators Employees have been settled and those wage increases were included in the department's uh, fiscal year 18 budget. And whereas during fiscal year 18 budget deliberations, labor agreements, slant pay plans were not known and were not included in the department's budget for the remaining employee groups, CILU, clerical, United Steel Workers, Parks, Public Works, Police, AFSCME Supervisors, and non-union. And whereas wage increases for three of those groups, CILU, clerical, AFSCME Supervisors, and non-union are now known and should be incorporated into a department's FY18 budget through a general contingency transfer. And whereas the employment agreement for the town manager requires a wage increase to the budgeted salary and other contractual obligations not included in the fiscal year 18 budget. And whereas during budget deliberations, funds were included in the general contingency uh, account in anticipation of wage adjustments occurring during the fiscal year for total contingency appropriation of $650,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved that $298,123 is transferred from the general fund contingency function, account number 1074, to the following general fund department's functions and referred to the RTM 6.5.3 for approval. Legislative policy, account number 1001, $19. Voter registration, account number 1003, $502. Town clerk, account number 1005, $7,997. Executive management, account number 1010, $29,289. Information technology, account number 1011, $16,667. Human resources, uh, account number 1012, $13,315. Finance, account number 13, uh, 1013. $41,818, emergency communications account number 1014, $2,557, public safety account number 1024, $15,686, public works account number 1035, $49,486, planning and development account number 1046, $29,855, human services account number 1015, $20,334, library, account number 1063, $44,549, parks and recreation, account number 1064, $26,049. Uh, $26, uh, the legislative history on That's this. That's right. You have to go to the legislative okay. history, so we're good. No, thank you very much, Representative Hall. Is there a second? second. Motion to moved and seconded for approval of referral 2017-0209, contingency transfer of wage increases. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Representative Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, <coughs> suggestion to uh, uh, 
for ten account ten fifteen uh, for human services should be ten fifty one. Must have been a typographical error. Human services, which is presently listed as account ten fifteen, should be account ten fifty one. Is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Representative Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, so if I understand the referral correctly, there are still, this is actually to the town manager, there are actually two union agreements that have yet to be settled? Correct. In progress. So the Parks and Public Works doesn't fall under the Parks and Recreation part of it, and the police doesn't fall under the Public Safety part of it? For down below? Right. Thank you. Oh, so we'll be coming back here again when those two are done. And hopefully soon. <laughs> Thanks. Are there any other, any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of approving referral 2017-0209, contingency transfer for wage increases for $298,123. Is that the correct number? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Chairman Nolte. Community Development, Chairman Obrey. No meeting, no report. Education, Chairman Nugent. No meeting, no report. Recreation, Chairman Wilson. No meeting, no report. Public Safety, Chairman McDermott. Public Works, Chairman Dean Shinbrock. No meeting, no report. Rules and Procedures, Chairman Massett. There was a meeting last month, and everyone has those minutes. It was included in their packet. So we didn't have a subsequent meeting. OK. So we had talked about, we've talked about this before. And I would like to make a motion to make a change to the RTM rules, specifically to Rule 8.1, Personal Interest and Conflict of Interest. The first sentence says, any member shall disqualify himself or herself for voting if he or she has a conflict of interest in the subject under consideration. I would like to add to the end of that sentence, as defined by Section 3.5.3, of the Groton Town Charter. There have been questions that have come up about, well, I guess I'm making that motion. Is there a second? Second. Purpose of discussion. I'm making that motion because it's come to my attention that, um, that people are not sure what conflict of interest, how it's defined when we vote. And so all I'm doing is adding the language from the charter that specifically defines, defines conflict of interest and just stick it in there to tighten it up and, uh, and, and make sure that definition is, is included. So that motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Representative Swindell. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there a, a line in the state statute that defines conflict of interest as being uh, something, um, well, I, I can't quote it to you, but uh, as I recall in previous discussions, uh, it's worded so that ordinary citizens who say pay taxes, for example, uh, would be able to vote on, uh, on setting tax rates. Uh, so does the town charter override the state statute? Here's the language of the town charter, section 3.5.3. .3. No elected or appointed official, member of any town board or town employee shall use his or her official position or office or take or fail to take any action or influence others to take or fail to take any action in a manner which he or she knows or has reason to believe may result in a personal or financial gain or will suffer a direct monetary loss, as the case may be, by reason of their official activity as stated in the Groton Charter. Uh, any conflicts of interest in matters of the town should be disclosed orally at the time. Such interest may be 
considered a conflict, and such person shall recuse themselves from the decision-making process. So I think I'm not sure with regards to the state statute. I've got it here, but there's not much difference. But all I'm trying to do is not change our rules, but simply clarify what a conflict of interest is. Uh, because people had a question about, because it doesn't say in our rules, it doesn't define what conflict of interest is, it kind of leaves it open. So I'm just tying it to the town charter section that defines it. So it's not, in my mind, it's not a rule change, it's just a clarification of the existing wording. Is there any other discussion on that? Representative Pasquale? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, I don't disagree with you, but also to point out, and, unless I'm mistaken, and, and as as far as the rules go, if somebody declares themselves uh, for whatever it may be, but still says, I'm still going to vote, I don't, I don't believe there's a con conflict of interest, uh, any member here can raise that question about that person's declaration that they're still going to go and puts it to you to make the decision as to whether that person can vote. That is correct. However, what has happened in the past is when I have confronted a person, they've said, well, I don't believe I have a conflict of interest. And it doesn't say in here what that is. So, you know, you may think I do, but I don't think I do. I'm trying to tighten up the rules so that we tie the definition of the charter. Oh, I'm, I'm that. not disagreeing with that, but I'm saying there's, there's also the, that procedure is here, and I'm not sure if members realize that, that if somebody stands up and declares that, I can call that out and make you as the monitor, moderator rule as to whether that person can vote or not. It's not, I, I declare this, but I'm still voting, like you okayed yourself. But if somebody believes here that no, there is a direct conflict and states that, it's left up to you to rule on that as far as procedure, I believe. And here's, here's where I'm going with that. You know, when this comes up, what I want to be able to do is just to remind people, because I don't want to call out people on the floor. I mean, we're not, we're not getting paid enough money to, to put up with that kind of abuse, right? But, but what I would do is I would just let people know before we vote, let's say there's something in the budget that's coming up, I would just remind that person that per the, the rule, I believe they have a conflict of interest as it's defined in the rules and that I will be expecting them to recuse themselves. I'm going to try to avoid calling people out, but yes, that can be done. But um, I'm hoping not to have that kind of food fight on the floor. I'm hoping to do it beforehand. Representative Streeter. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have a question. If, if an individual, a member, does declare and then indicates he, will, he or she will recluse themselves from voting, does it prohibit them from participating in the discussion? Not at all. Okay, thank you. As a matter of fact, um, it goes on to say in Rule 8.1, any member who voluntarily does not vote on an issue shall retain all other rights of their office. And um, so, in my opinion, they're allowed to partake in the discussion, or if they if they have certain knowledge, they can they you know they're not muffled. But and if I may suggest, if if your motion is approved, that that particular article be be prov provided to all the members so they have a definite understanding. They say, well, I didn't know the wording of it. Okay. That you provide that to each member so they can't say, I didn't know about it? Are you talking about the, uh, the change that we're talking about right now? Rep All right, Representative Massett. Um, this is just a procedural question. Will this vote, because in effect we are going to amend our rule, Mm -hmm. Will this vote require a two-thirds um, vote of those of us who are here? Yes, yes. yes. yes it does. Okay. Um, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, um, just to um, clarify what 
I think everybody understands that I'll just say it for the record that um, what the moderator is suggesting <coughs> is to include uh, as defined in section 3.5.3 of the town charter and if we read the town the town charter 3.5.3 it specifically uh, refers to Connecticut general statutes and the conflict of interest in addition to other things that I could read it out loud if you'd like me to How long is it? It's a paragraph. Okay, go ahead. No elected or appointed official, member of any town ABC, that's a board or commission or agency, or town employee shall use his or her official position or office or take or fail to take any action or influence others or take or fail to take any action in a manner which he or she knows or has reason to believe may result in a personal financial gain or will suffer a direct monetary loss as the case may be by reason of his or her own official activity as stated in Connecticut General Statute. Any conflict of interest in matter of town shall be disclosed orally at the time of such interest may be considered a conflict. Such persons shall recuse him or herself from the decision making process. No elected or appointed official member of any board um, agency board or commission or town employee shall disclose or use any confidential information obtained in an official capacity except for the discharge of his or her duties. The term confidential shall not be used to restrict the release of any information that is properly available to the public. No elected or appointed official member or any agency board or commission or town employee shall accept gifts or services or other items of any person or entity currently doing business with the town except those of dedicable intrinsical value. So that's what that says. And I'm not going to read the state statute, but it's, it does refer to the state statute, so you incorporate the two. So Representative Streeter, are you asking that that wording be put out and then we vote on it at the next, the next meeting so that everybody can read the words? No. My recommendation, if your motion passes tonight, that you provide everyone with the new word. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. What's that? You're supposed to provide everybody with new, vote, new words before they vote on it, not after. Yeah, that's why I asked you to do it last week. Pardon? That's why I asked you to do it. So what we'll do is, I've made that recommendation. Um, town clerk's going to put that out in the minutes of this meeting so everybody has a chance to see it. And then we can vote on it at the next meeting. Yes. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna vote to table the motion in just a second. Representative Wilson. So what it'll look like, well, I'll send the actual rules with the change included, and it'll be in a different font, so you'll be able to tell what the addition is, okay? That's really the right way to do it. So I will make a motion to table this motion until the next meeting. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded to table this motion. Table motion amending the RTM rules and procedures. Is there any discussion on tabling it? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of tabling, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries unanimously. Are there any budget discussions? Seeing none, we'll move on to the last order of business tonight, voting on our meeting schedule for next year. Referral 2017-0220, 2018 RTM meeting schedule. Resolution approving 2018 RTM meeting schedule, whereas freedom of information statutes require filing calendar year schedule of meetings with the town clerk, and whereas the representative town meeting is met regularly on the second Wednesday of each month, now th therefore be it resolved that the representative town meeting hereby approves the meeting schedule for 2018. All meetings be held at 7.30 p.m. at the Groton Senior Center. Is there any second, second. on this second. motion? <clears throat> Motion's been moved and seconded to approve referral 2017-0220, 2018 RTM meeting schedule. Is there any discussion? 
Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries unanimously. Second. Motion been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. We're adjourned.